So back to some nuts and bolts of attributes. I've created this example we had in previous videos where I have me attribute, inherits attribute, and thus I can decorate a class with uh, attribute. And I want to compile this code file and show you how this attribute gets put in the resulting MSIL or IL level of things. If you remember, and I'm sorry if this is a review, but I think it helps all of us to see this several times. We write C sharp code in a file just like this one. Oh, I missed it. That one. And we compile that to MSIL or sometimes called missile, but Microsoft Intermediate Language, which is not directly executable. The C sharp compiler compiles the C sharp to that level. And then I run time the just in time compiler. It actually turns these instructions into bits and bytes and assembly level edges kind of stuff for the, we'll call it native instructions. Native instructions for the particular processor that we are executing upon. All right, so what I want to do is compile the C sharp down to, when I say at the .NET level, this is what I'm talking about, the .NET level of things, the missile level of things, and see how this attribute got embedded as data at the missile level. So let's do just that. I'm, I'm going to bring up my Visual Studio command prompt, and I have a hunch that we're going to compile a lot of code and look at it in IL level, so I'm going to write a batch file to do that. If you don't understand DOS batching, uh, Google more about it if you really want to know. It's not too big of a deal, but I'm just going to show you how to make a batch file quickly because I think it's kind of useful to at least see once. Copy con into i.bat. Con is short for console. So now the console is waiting for me to type stuff, and whatever I type, it will copy that text into i.bat. Bat is short for batch. So what I want to do is run the C# -sharp compiler on main class .cs. This main class .cs file I saved to C colon backslash so that it's easily accessible. And then I want to run IL disassembler ildasm. I want to disassemble the Microsoft missile code and I want to send it out to my missile.txt. And I need to say we're going to disassemble the main class.exe file that was generated from the C sharp file on compile here. And then I'm going to say start my missile. Oops, my missile.txt. And that will open Notepad and allow me to see the text file. And then uh, Control Z to end my, that marks the end of my file, so to say, in the console that I'm typing here. I hit Enter. And everything I typed into the console, that's what con is, copy from con into the batch file, I now can type i.bat, or just i for short, and the, and the uh, DOS prompt will complete it with .bat, and all these instructions will run automatically for me. So there you go, this is our disassembled code. Oh, look at all this stuff. All right, you can say, hey, here's me attribute, and here's the code for the me attribute constructor. And if we look a little further, we can see main class. And right here, look at this, dot custom. Now, something I want you to notice about this missile code is that there are a lot of things that start with a dot. Okay, dot custom, dot class, dot method, dot, 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 all these dot things. Dot file alignment, dot stack reserves, dot, 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 all these, ooh, dot assembly. Okay, the dots mean data. All right, and you cannot execute data. It's just extra information that is embedded into your executable. Normal unmanaged executables do not have all this stuff. All right, all this information is lost. This C++ is my perfect example. It just goes in, the unmanaged C++ goes in, compiles your file, and all the class information is lost as far as the executable is concerned. It's all, da it's all code. All right. But a .NET executable is much different. It maintains, hey, I have a class, and it's called main class, and here's a custom attribute that it was tagged with, and here's a method, and blah, blah, blah. Only these instructions right here are code. I mean, here's some code, but the .max stack is not code, and .entry point, guess what that marks? That marks where main is. I could rename this to whatever I want to, 
but and reassemble it, and then hey, uh, it would still run correctly because the .NET framework would know that this method is my entry point or my main. So anyway, you get, hopefully you get the idea. Dot custom again, the word custom. We are customizing our class. We're adding a custom attribute and instance void me attribute. Here's the constructor, and I can't remember exactly how this data right here works. There's a great book on it, though, if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts. Let me see if I can find it for you here. Yay, I found it. It's kind of old, but the information has not changed. 2003, October 8. Yes, it came out right when .NET was coming out. Anyway, this Jason Bot guy is pretty smart. He did a great job. If you really want to understand everything about attributes, there you go. And I remember him in that book also covering how this works. We're going to look at, at it a little bit, but for the most part, the constructor, this is an argument to the constructor, so to say. Let's see if we can spice this up a little bit. No, don't save that. Uh, let's, let's actually give me class a constructor. Let's say constructor me attribute, and I'm going to say int arg for argument, and then down here we're going to say, let's do a 9. Alright, me with a 9. Let's save that. Bring up the uh, console again. Let's reassemble this and look at the dot custom for main class. Dot custom instance. You notice this is a little bit longer now. Alright, this data represents the, the data embedded directly, literal, constant data embedded directly in the constructor call so that .NET knows when it creates an instance of me attribute if it has to when we call get custom attributes then it will pass a 9 for that uh, argument we did right here so there you go literally a 9 right there now these values that we pass to constructors have to be evaluatable at compile time meaning compile time constant for example, 9, the compiler can easily say, oh, that's a 9, I can put that in the code, no problem. But if I try to say new random dot next, well, obviously random dot next is not going to run till runtime. And so the compiler will complain saying, hey, um, uh, how am I supposed to embed a value directly into the IL that I can't get until runtime? That just doesn't make sense. So the expression that we pass here must be able to be evaluated by the compiler, such as, 9 was, or maybe we could do 5 plus 3. Right? 5 plus 3 is obviously an expression that can be evaluated by the compiler. The compiler knows what 5 means, it knows what 3 means, and it knows what plus means, so then it could evaluate that expression if I build this. Build succeeded, and let's go back and run our little magic on it. And we can find dot custom again, and look, 5 plus 3 equaled we can go even further. Remember I did strings? String, me string. And then here we'll say, I love programming with attributes. Actually, having said that, I also need to say something else. Don't see attributes as like a hammer. You know, I want, want, once you give somebody a hammer, then everything is a nail. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't want to go to a a surgeon who believed that, that once they got their favorite knife, then that one knife was the correct knife for all situations. That's not true. Attributes, just like everything in .NET, reflections and object-orientedness and, and uh, delegates, events, link, they're all separate tools that have their own purpose. Be a professional and use attributes where appropriate. Let's save this, open up the console again, run our magic. Let's go... Oops, I hit the wrong one. I want to hit c.bat. I want to do i.bat. Let's find our dot custom down here. Dot custom me attribute. Look, the data to the constructor got a lot longer. Okay, and the, oh, that's kind of even nice out here. It shows us generally what's going on out here. I love programming with the attributes. It embedded that string as the character, the characters are there. We're seeing their ASCII values out here. If we decoded this with ASCII, in fact, in fact, why not? Why not? Let me get an ASCII table up. Chrome. And let's just say ASCII table. And you can see I go there a lot. ASCII table.com. Okay, this is their ASCII table. So 6E. Let's grab 6E here and find it in our ASCII table. The hex for 6E. I'm looking down these hex columns for 6E. Looks like 6E is an N. 
Alright, so I would assume, oops, I'd assume that's probably one of the ends in programming. Might be this one. I love programming. It could be this N. Uh, I'll leave it up to you. Well, we can find out. What's 6 E? Here's our N. What's 6 7? Let's go and find 6 7. 6 7 is G. So I'm going to assume that we are seeing NG right there. 6 E, 6 7 is NG. But notice the string literal. The string little, the compiler is able to evaluate this literal at compile time and embed those values directly uh, into the executable with the dot custom attribute there. If I tried to do something here like, I don't know, plus, uh, well again, new <laughs> random, dot next, dot two string, well two string some large integer, and then the compiler complains and say, um, yeah, I, kn I know what this literal means, but this thing's not going to show up till runtime, and how am I supposed to embed a runtime value in there? So, anyway, I hope that was interesting to you to see how these arguments are embedded directly uh, into the missile. One thing before I close, let's try doing a property. Okay, uh, in fact, we'll say string me string. I'll just make it a property instead. We'll go down here and public on this. String me string get set and right here I'll say me string maybe I should get rid of all this stuff get rid of that and me string gets that control shift B it builds uh, we probably won't notice much of a difference here in the actual dot custom where is it dot custom right here dot custom me attribute and we're still seeing the string embedded uh, a little bit different here though and you, know, you can go get Jason box book if you really want to learn the nitty-gritty details of how this is embedded yes it's interesting yes it's cool yes that's how it works